A new Canadian renter's bill of rights and a $15 million tenant protection fund are among the new measures in the budget the feds say they'll introduce. Will the change in budget strategy pay off for the Liberals? Our Sunday strategy session is here to answer that question. Kathleen Monk is a former director of communications to the late Jack Layton. Corey Tonight was Ontario Premier Doug Ford's campaign manager and former director of communications for Prime Minister Stephen Harper. And Scott Reed is a former communications director to Prime Minister Paul Martin. Hi, everybody. Hi Good to see you. Hey, so, uh, Kathleen, I'll start with you. The, the strategy is, um, you know, being employed elsewhere, but not really here in Ottawa, uh, as long as I can remember, actually. Somebody told me today that the last time maybe was something like this during the Martin year. So we'll get Scott on that. <laughs> why do you think, first of all, like the question why? Why do you think they're doing this? Well, they need to change the narrative, first of all. They need to actually put the opposition on their back heels. And the reason they're doing this is to kind of get more earned media out of it. So when you're looking at their announcements, you want to look at kind of who they're targeting. What is the policy issue set? And how are they rolling this out? And we saw from this past week that they're doing announcements across the country, but they're also trying to tap into different sources of media, not the legacy media that this targeted voter demographic of the Gen Z's and and the Millennials would look at they're actually trying to talk to influencers and other social channels but it's interesting when you leak like this in advance of a budget and I can give you another example Jim Flaherty in 2009 he leaked so much in advance of the budget that in fact journalists were openly musing if he would have anything left to say on budget day but it does give the governing liberals the governing party that leaks like this the most amount of immediate attention and the most impact which is critically important right now because we know that the Liberals are on their back heels. Uh, they've been low in the polls and they need to start framing up the narrative and they're going to use this period just lastly to test uh, basically not only policies but communication tactics that they can roll out into, as a part of a larger campaign in the summer. Well to that point as well Scott I mean the difference here around for example what happened with Jim Flaherty is it's not leaking it like we've become accustomed to it's actually like making I think they're going to make another 17 or so announcements before budget day like it's full on yeah no this is these are not leaks this is uh we're not going to have a budget day we're going to have budget days it's like liberal lent instead of giving <laughs> something up though you get something for day after day after day uh I, it'll be interesting to see as a communication strategy it has been employed like you mentioned back in the day where you know we used to do things like this we do a pre-budget tour then we do a post-budget tour we try to turn it into an event that allowed us to dominate and control the news hole uh, albeit in a very different era for you know and not just a couple of days but for a few weeks I think the most interesting thing, though, is the implied demographic focus. So the Liberals are openly saying they're going after younger voters. And even though this seems like an offensive strategy because they're going out there and pre-marketing the items, it therefore sounds to me like it's actually defensive. Because if you're going to be focusing on younger voters, when first with rental, then with child care, as an example, the first two days, you're really trying to hold your own against the NDP. Uh, that isn't trying to steal back voters that have drifted over to the Conservatives, by and large. And I think that's really interesting. You've got this tension, therefore, where the NDP are going to support the budget, but the Liberals are going to spend two, three weeks in advance of it trying to fortify themselves demographically, electorally, against the voters they're worried about losing to NDP voters. And I, I, I think that's interesting. And I think the question remains, are they focused on the right voters? It, are these the voters and the voting groups that they should be prioritizing? It tells you that they're worried about the NDP, three, four percent behind them, climbing up. I'll, I'll get you back in a second, Kelly. Yeah. I just want to bring Corey in because I think that question about demographics is very interesting. Uh, everybody I've spoken to says it's like for, there's a generation called MZ apparently, which I was unaware of, 43 and under. I just I just make it in there. But the idea is that the 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 messaging and the, the policies will be very targeted towards that group. But the sense is that they will be able to capture a wider group because the assumption is the parents and grandparents of that generation are primarily concerned with um, the plight that their kids are facing. Do you think that is politically uh, or strategically smart? Yeah, I think they're perhaps we're thinking it a little bit, you know, but look, m millennials are uh, very upset about the housing situation. And, uh, at, you know, but I, I, I got to say, uh, as great a guy as he is, uh, I, I disagree with my friend Scott on this. Like, I, I think it is a defensive strategy against the conservatives. Uh, when Trudeau came into office in uh, 2015, he did it uh, with large amounts of support from millennials who were, were voting, you know, many of them for the first time in that election. 
Those people have moved en masse to the Conservative Party, largely on the issue of housing. And I think this is, uh, this is a bid to try to bring some of those people back to the Liberal Party. I don't think the, the Liberals are worried about losing uh, uh, voters to the NDP at this point. Like the, the NDP are uh, stuck in the basement with, uh, with the Liberals. Uh, and Bolivia is eating lunch of both of those parties right now. Okay, Kathleen, where do you fall between the two of our colleagues? Yeah, well, I, I think that um, I think that the Liberals are trying to speak to those voters who brought them back into power in, in the first place in 2015. They are speaking to those MZs or the mil millennial uh, generation and also those Zs. And I think that that's really important because, frankly, they've been ignored for the last uh, number of years. And I think they're pivoting back and they need to speak to that demographic. I think that demographic will be critical, that 18 to 40, maybe 43 <laughs> um, demographic, uh, to basically kind of get them back and to motivate them back into voting. And they're going to do that through those affordability measures, whether it will work or not, that's up to question. I can quibble with the policies that they're rolling out for sure. I mean, the, the federal government does have the ability to use its land and its resources to build non-market housing that can actually change the game. Because, you know, when you're talking about a rental bill of rights and you still only have a 2% vacancy rate in a city like Toronto, it's not really going to change the dynamic that much, right, when you just don't have the housing that's available. The government could do things. So that's a policy debate we're having. But in terms of the strategy and the tactics they're using here, I think they could be effective. My sense, though, Scott, is the reason, for example, there won't be a lot of policies about non-market housing is because they feel that demographic that we've been talking about would be uh, greater impacted by market housing and driving the supply on that side. And we've seen some series of announcements to that degree. Do you think, as you raised the question a little bit earlier, that that demographic is the one they should be focused on? Well, I, you know, they've got access to more data than I do. So you have to be guided by that. The reason I think that it's less about trying to steal voters back from the Conservatives is that if I was, based on the data I've seen, the public polling that I look at, if I was going to focus on that, I'd be going after older women. I'd be going after older women in Atlantic Canada. I'd be going after older women in suburban Canada, ridings around Vancouver, ridings around Toronto in particular. And I'd be really training my messages on them. I know people make this argument that if you talk about the 25-year-olds, you might also get their parents. I feel like that's a little bit of stretched logic. Um, and so from my perspective, the focus on the younger demographic, the millennial voters, um, it really does feel to me like they're worried about bleeding uh, to the NDP. And to be honest with you, I'm not convinced it is the right demographic for them to go over. I'm not sure that those people are going to switch. I'm not sure those voters are going to come back and register their votes in the next election. I'd be a hell of a lot more worried, to be honest with you if I was them, about 55-year-old uh, women, because it, it blows my mind that Pierre Polyev can be winning those voters, and the Liberals need them back, not in two years, but now. My guess is there may be fewer policy levers available to them, Corey, to address that other key demographic, and maybe that's where the negative campaigning comes in, like the, the framing of Polyev, which they're already, as we've talked about many times, really behind on. Well, ne negative ad advertising is, is good for voter suppression, like to get other guys' voters to not go to the polls. But I, and, and I think, you know, clearly they need to do some of that to, to try to, to uh, push Polyev's numbers down. But they have a, a popularity problem, too. Like they need more voters to actually vote for them as well. And, uh, and uh, I think that's going to be a much bigger challenge. Uh, I think a lot of Canadians have closed their ears to what, the, what this government and what this prime minister has to say. And they've just moved on. And, uh, and to try to reach them uh, through traditional means is going to be very, very difficult. Uh, which brings us back to one of our favorite topics we like to talk about, which is where is the advertising? Because uh, I, I don't think uh, there is an earned media strategy that's going to do it for them. I mean, 20 days of budget announcements. Get ready, everybody. <laughs> you never know. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate it. Our Sunday strategy session. Corey tonight, Scott Reed and Kathleen Monk.